Welcome to presentation for CO275 about events. So far in our demos we created an application which shows views. Now, views um, are containers that allow us to divide the screen and to put other objects inside of them. For example, the green square here is a view and the red square is a view. And then I have an image view uh, where I can put in um, an image like I have here in the bottom left hand corner. And to do that, uh, just in the way of review, uh, we wrote this particular code. We start with creating a window and the window is a basic, uh, basic object that our app requires. Then this is uh, the code that builds our image in the corner. Uh, co the corner is uh, accomplished by uh, specifying bottom of zero and left of zero. And then we have the two views, the green and the red. They're both squares because the height and the width are the same. And then at the end we basically add the image to the window and the view. So at this point what I'll do is I'll comment out the editing of the image so the image will no longer be visible on the screen. And what we want to explore is this concept of events. Well, most apps uh, would like we would like to have some kind of uh, interactivity with the end user. So the end user maybe will type something in or the end user will click on things. And of course mobile devices give us all the uh, new ways of interacting. We can take pictures and automatically upload them or make them part of our application. Uh, we can use uh, other devices like the compass. We can uh, uh, basically have input on the X and Y axis, how the phone is being held. So um, all new ways that mobile technology allows us to interact and gather feedback from the user. So let's uh, see how events can be implemented into our app. Well, first of all, uh, we have to choose the object that's going to receive uh, the event. So for the moment, what I will do is I will choose the green box. And the green box happens to be view 1. Uh, let's see how we can add an event. In order to add an event, we have to add an event listener. So let's do that. We'll say view one dot add event listener. You can see how uh, Eclipse is helping me here with coding. And then we're going to say click. So an event listener is a method that's associated with an object, specifically with view here. And this particular method is going to take two parameters. The first one is going to be type of an event. A click, for example. A click is basically a tap on a phone. There are other events. Uh, in a moment, I'll show you in the documentation uh, how we can look up what available events uh, we have. And then we have to provide a function. Now, the function can be as easy as the name of the function. So let me show you how this can be done. Let's say that uh, we have a function here view one grow. Okay, this is just a name that I just came up with and what we are saying in this event listener is that whenever a user clicks on or taps on view one on that green box and the kind of event the user generated is a click then go ahead and activate or fire the view one grow function. Well, let's go ahead and write uh, the, the function itself. We start with the word function, then we provide the name of the function, and then we go ahead and uh, in parentheses uh, we are going to use um, parameter E which basically stands for the source that generated uh, our function, uh, that generated our event. So uh, we can uh, often write a single function and the multiple uh, elements can fire uh, event to use this function. And so then we can find out through this E object perhaps the name or the ID uh, of uh, the element that fired the function. Okay, and so now we'll go ahead and just uh, specify 
uh, opening and closing uh, opening and closing tag for the function. Okay, so at this point, what I will do is I will create a very simple uh, result, which is going to be an alert box. We'll say alert. I got clicked. All right. So again, what we just did is we created view. We called it view one. This view one uh, is created right here. Then we added a listener so that we are enabling this view to listen for a click event. And then we specified there's a function out there which is going to have code which is important to be executed whenever the user clicks. All right, let's see how this might work. We'll go ahead and run, run this to the simulator. Okay, and what you will notice right away is that the image is gone, right? I commented out the image so that it doesn't show on the screen. And now when I click on the green, I now have an alert box that says I got clicked. Okay, and so that is an event that fires. Okay, let me show you something that often happens in uh, Titanium code uh, when it comes to uh, listeners. Instead of creating a custom function like I did right here, it is possible to use an anonymous function to say, okay, this is just a built-in function that is going to sit right inside of um, right inside of our add listener um, expression and uh, we can put the code then that we're trying to execute right inside of it. Oops, let's see, let me get rid of this. Okay, so now we have an uh, anonymous function that doesn't have a name. We still have that E object that we can use if needed. Uh, but this is the type of syntax that you will see in Titanium apps. Basically, uh, it's still the add listener method, and there are still two parameters, but the second parameter is built out into a function. So that's why there's this kind of a silly ending where you have a, a squirrely bracket and round parentheses. But if we run it, we should see uh, the same uh, result. It's just different syntax and maybe you've wondered in the demo apps where this uh, was coming from. And so as I click, I still have the event. Again, creating a custom function is more flexible because you can then reuse that custom function in multiple clicks. Well, uh, let's uh, have some fun with this and perhaps every time a user clicks on the green view, we're going to make the view taller. Okay, let's try that. Uh, instead of uh, doing the alert, we'll just say something like uh, grab the height and uh, make sure that the height, whoops, make sure that the height is going to be uh, incremented by maybe 20 pixels. All right, let's run this one. All right, and so now, when I click the green height, look, the view is going to grow. Okay, <clears throat> now what if, if someone was to click on the red, the view was going to shrink? Let's try that. What we have to do, and I'll just uh, copy and paste here, what we have to do is we have to work with view number two, the, the red view, and now we're going to say, okay, Whenever the red view is clicked, make sure to subtract an amount of pixels. Now this all looks reasonable, doesn't it? Well, I want to show you an interesting uh, uh, event that we are, we are creating right now that um, is going to serve as a lesson for us. Notice that when I click on the green, it go ahead and grows. When I click on the red, Oh, for some reason it does not grow. Let's see. What was I overthinking on this one? Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, that's the lesson. I'm sorry. Everything works. Okay, everything is working. Let me just explain what's happening right now. Notice that in order to click on the red box, 
I also have to click on the green box because the red box resides in the other view. So guess what? Both functions are executing at the same time. And as a result, nothing is growing. So to resolve this, one way to do that would be to say, okay, make sure that when you're subtracting the pixels, you subtract what I want to subtract and what the other function is already adding at the same time. So this is uh, teaching us uh, how views, when they're embedded in each other, they are going to ac accept clicks. See how now, because we are subtracting twice as many pixels, the moment I hit the red, 20 is added, but then we take 40 away, which is why it actually works um, like I expected it to work. Okay, so here's the lesson. Instead of using views for this click event, it really makes probably more sense to use buttons, right? Because now, uh, with my clicks and the way I've arranged this little game, um, I have to subtract twice as many pixels and it probably is going to lead to some other complications in the future. So instead, let's go ahead and create some buttons. I'm going to comment out of this section of code and uh, we'll create buttons. The other benefit of buttons is that users know to click on buttons. See, they may not know to click on views just because in your head it makes perfect sense. Uh, the users may not be so intuitive. So let's see how we can create buttons which are going to uh, help us uh, communicate with users. To create the buttons, I'm going to go back uh, to the portion of the code where we are creating objects. It, it makes good sense to create all the objects in one place and then manipulate them and then create events in, in, in another section. So let's create a button. We'll say var and uh, we'll call this button um, up. So B up is just the name of the button that I just created. And we're saying titanium user interface create a button. And as we create this button, we are going to provide a couple of um, parameters. Let's put those buttons at the very bottom of our, of our screen. So we'll say bottom zero and then uh, left zero and uh, let's make the button maybe 30 pixel with a width of 100 pixels and we're going to give a title to this button so what's going to appear on the actual button and that's up. And always remember to put a semicolon after um, after our uh, creation of an object. All right. With this button being built, let's build another button. This button is going to be called down. And now uh, we'll use the same the same create uh, creation process. All right. Create a button, and uh, now the bottom is going to be zero. So both buttons buttons are going to be at the bottom. And this one's going to be on the right. Okay, so we're putting, putting this button on the right. And width is going to be the same. And title is just going to say down. Okay, very nice. And then semicolon at the end. Okay, so we have... Oh, I think I lost my height on this one. Height is going to be 30. And by the way, you don't have to have them in the same sequence. Uh, these are uh, pr uh, properties uh, that can um, can be resequenced. So I can take the right and I can put it uh, here at the very bottom like this. As long as my um, commas at the end agree, uh, this is going to work just fine. Okay, so now we have two buttons, but these buttons are not yet installed on the interface, right? So what we may want to do, we already have the two views. We're going to say, go ahead and into the window, add the first button, okay? And into the window, make sure to add the second button. 
All right, so that's how now we'll have two buttons available. Okay, let's run this before we get too far. We'll go ahead and execute, make sure that there are no errors, no, uh, no spelling issues. And uh, now we have two buttons at the bottom here, up and down, up and down. Okay, and we are now ready to create events for these buttons. Well, let's go ahead and, and create, uh, create the events. So we have to start by using the names of the buttons and then say add event listener. And from here we'll say, okay, whenever the button is clicked, okay, then make sure to use uh, a function. And so let's use a function here uh, called uh, go up. Okay, and uh, for the second button, we'll go ahead and use another function. This time it'll be called go down. So now we have two buttons. Okay, let's see. Two buttons added right here. And there are two events defined. And so do you remember what we have to do next? Well, next we have to create the functions that we just made up right here. So we'll say function go up. And uh, the function is going to... In our instance, the function is going to make the green view go up. Let's see how this might work. So let's take view... Uh, let's see. Maybe not. Maybe not the view. Let's let's do something different. Uh, let's have uh, let's have the image. Uh, what we'll do here is we'll take uh, uh, take the view and remove it from the screen. We'll put our image back on the screen. Okay. Put our image back on the screen. Next, the image. Uh, let's make sure that the image is painted in the middle. So we'll remove the bottom and the left parameters okay so now we should have image in the middle of our app and we're going to make the image go up the screen with every click well let's see how this is going to be done uh, let's see we need to go to um, our image view and we'll say the image view uh, top is going to equal image view top and uh, let's see what would be uh, a reasonable amount for this uh, to to walk up uh, well let's just use maybe uh, uh, 20 pixels all right let's see how this might work we now have a go up function so with the up button we're hoping that the image will travel uh, travel up All right, and so we have an error. Oh, that's all right. Uh, okay, so the, the error had to do with um, the error had to do with um, uh, the go down function, which is not uh, not defined yet. Okay. Here's another lesson. Notice at the bottom here, we have a warning that says invalid dimension value, and that happens whenever I click the up button. Well, here's what is happening. Image.top is actually not yet defined. Um, in our image, we did not specify the top parameter. So the top parameter was calculated behind the scenes. And so programmatically, we actually don't have access to it. So what we have to do is after opening the window, okay, we can tell titanium what the top value will be and this is how we'll do it we'll say image dot top equals uh, titanium um, platform display caps uh, platform height divided by two so the magic that's happening right now is we're taking the screen height basically Okay, here's the screen height. 
divide that by 2, and then make sure that uh, you also uh, perhaps subtract um, a few pixels uh, because uh, we are selecting the top of the image uh, to be just above the middle of the screen so that the, the entire image feels like it is uh, in the middle of the screen. Okay, so now that the image.top is actually defined, you see we can manipulate it in the function. Okay, so let's just see how this might work. Okay, we still have uh, not defined go down, which is okay. But now when we say up, oh, look at that, it's still not working. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's take it as a challenge and see how we fix that. Let's see, image.top. All right, let me pause just for a second. All right, welcome back. So here's the lesson that, uh, uh, that, that we have in this code. Because when I execute Titanium, I get an error right on line 82. You see, Titanium stops processing the other lines of code. So it actually detects an error here, it, and, and then it never takes into consideration the rest of the code. So what we have to do is uh, we either comment out this line or we build the rest um, of, 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 of the go down function. So let's just comment it out for a moment and see how this might work. Okay, so here is our app. There was no errors. And now when I click the up button, notice that the image is traveling up the screen. Now, here is the uh, theory of uh, relativity and uh, the uh, difference of uh, frame uh, of relevance here. When I say up, the pixels are being edited and the image is, tra is traveling technically up, although what the user is saying is that the image is going down. So what we have to do to fix that is we're going to say subtract minus 20 whenever the user says uh, go up. And then let's go ahead and add the second uh, function go down all right, and now with the function called go down, we'll go ahead and, and say down. How about adding the 20 pixels? Okay, and so we go ahead and execute this. All right, so image is in the middle. When I say up, the image is traveling up. When I say down, the image is going down. Okay, so in this presentation, we saw how to create events so that we can interact with our app. Now, I can see how this can be a game with two little kids having access, maybe on the iPad, to the up button and the down button and seeing which one can, which one can um, get the image to uh, go either to the bottom or the top. There it is, a simple game.